Hi, I'm Bill Donahue, President of the Catholic League. I'd like to address the situation regarding Cardinal Pell, who's a good man from Australia, who's been much maligned by the media and others. He's going to appear in court in Australia, in, in Melbourne, on July the 26th. Now, if you want to go to the Catholic League website, www.catholicleague.org, you'll find my statement, which is rather lengthy, uh, about him. It's called The War Against Cardinal Pell. I'm convinced that this man is being railroaded. Look, this is a guy who back in 1996, when he was in Australia, was the first uh, member of the hierarchy to lead reforms, okay? He was concerned about the sexual abuse of minors before anybody else, when it, before it was popular to do so, and he led some major reforms. Now, all of a sudden, this is the guy who's being accused of not doing enough. More importantly, he's actually being accused by some people that he actually molested some people. Now, who are these people? These are people who, you know, 40 years ago, they're in a swimming pool in the 1970s. He's throwing them off his shoulder, and they say that he inappropriately touched them. I mean, I'll tell you one thing. If somebody was inappropriately touched by anyone, they should make immediate uh, charges against that person. Why are you waiting 40 years? And, and you know, I, I'm a little bit suspect. I mean, people horse around in pools. Some things happen. You know, you touch the guy maybe the wrong way. I don't know. I wasn't there. Neither were you. All I'm saying is that it's, why would it take 40 years? More importantly, who are these people? You ever take a look at the profile of these people? Go up to the uh, our, our Catholic League website on this. These guys are ex-cons, many of them. They beat their girlfriends. They, they stalk them. They drive drunk. They're on amphetamines. I don't mean one or two of them. You take a look at this. One, one, one kid said that he uh, made charges that uh, uh, Pell made him uh, perform oral sex on him. But then, before this kid died, overdosed, unfortunately, on drugs, he did tell his mother on two occasions that that wasn't true. So I'm very suspect about some of these things. You know, repressed memory is a fiction, people. You don't forget something that's happened to you, particularly when it was egregious. If anything, you can't let go of it. So I'm beginning to wonder, why is it taking so many decades of these people uh, to, to come forth? Not only are they, some of them are just out and out liars, too, as you'll see by you read the document. In other words, Pell wasn't even in the same place. He was in Rome when they said he was abusing somebody in Australia. So all this stuff is going to come out. Can he get a fair trial? Even those people who are not exactly hospitable to the Catholic Church say no. You know, they, they call Victoria, the state of Victoria in Australia, the People's Republic of Victoria. It's a hotbed of left-wing activism and anti-Catholicism. And when they go to trial, they don't have what they have in the United States, which is the voir dire. That's the questioning of prospective jurors. So how are you going to screen if somebody has an animus against Catholicism? You know, that's another kind of problem that's there. Look, why is Pell hated? I'll tell you why he's hated. He's a big man who stands for orthodoxy. He defends traditional moral values, an outspoken critic of those people who are promoting abortion and uh, gay rights to the extreme. And that's why he's hated by people on the left, not just in Australia, but all across North America and in Europe. They want to see if they can't take somebody down who's that close to the Pope. There are other reasons uh, involved in this that some people might say as well. Now, this Royal Commission in Australia, did they look at other religions the way they did the Catholic religion? They did, but they spent very little time on them. And matter of fact, the third largest religion in Australia is Islam. Guess what? Not a single imam was asked to testify. They got a pass. That's right. Islam gets a pass. The Muslims don't get questioned. The Catholics do. So I begin to wonder about that. What's going on? When they make these charges that 7% of the Australian priests from 1980 to 2015 were involved in uh, abuse, how do we know that? First of all, they're not substantiated. It includes substantiated and unsubstantiated charges. Quite frankly, they did that in the United States. They said 4% of the priests between 1915, 1950, sorry, I'm sorry, 1950 and uh, 2002 were involved in accusation, were involved in abuse. As a matter of fact, that figure is not 4%, it's 2% if you take a look at the substantiated charges. Otherwise, we just have accusations thrown out there. And, of course, who was doing the molesting? In almost every case, 80%, it's homosexuals. It was homosexuals in the United States. It's homosexuals in Australia. Go look at the data. Go look at the website. Read what I've said about this. The data are all there. We're not talking about prepubescent boys, okay? And, of course, we're not talking about girls in most cases. It's always the boys, isn't it? It's not pedophiles. Less than 5% 
of the priests involved in molestation in the United States were pedophiles. How do I know that? Take a look at the John Jay study of criminal justice on this. On this, it's not my opinion. You got the same thing going on over there. Look, Cardinal Pell is a good man. He's being railroaded. He's being blackmailed. He's being framed because he's an orthodox, outspoken defender of the truth. And if you have any doubt about it, read what I'm saying on the Catholic League website and then make up your own mind. Thank you for this opportunity to address you.